Okay, because I'm going to give you kind of a five-point plan jointly on how to really explore the newspaper and magazine landscape and really hone in on the best way to A, come up with a travel article angle, and B, how to find a good home for it. Okay? So we all have, um, or you're going to be getting them soon, this is what I call a sampling <coughs> of magazines, and I say a sampling. I also like to kind of bring what I think is a really good example of what we have as the general travel magazine market out there, okay? Um, and then I'm also going to be handing out a little later on how you can actually really go in and uh, discover the details of each of the magazines so that you can tailor, okay, your uh, pitch letter and your article, because you're actually, what you're doing is you're sort of actually changing the slant and angle of the article, and I'm going to go over that in a five-point plan, along with the all-important pitch letter. And with the pitch letter, we're going to actually break it down to very basic components, because as I said, the pitch letter is um, one of the more anxiety-producing aspects of being a freelance writer. Okay? Um, but once you master it, <laughs> it's just a matter of really doing it. So if you look at um, the intro to travel writing, the travel market, a sampling of magazines that cover travel. Thank you, Katarina. Um, <clears throat> if you look at this uh, list, you will see a range. Does anyone have a, um, you know, does anyone have sort of a go-to magazine that they always go to, that they really use for their travel information? Thank you. For their travel information. Does anyone have a favorite travel magazine? Some like budget travel. Yeah. Travel. Yes. Budget travel. Anyone else have a favorite magazine? Islands. Anyone have a um, newspaper travel section that they read weekly? Uh, could, huh? Right. The Times, both online and print. You do? Okay. Um, so I've done a list. It's starting out with, yes, a far magazine. Um, a new magazine that launched in August of 2009. They only do international travel, not domestic. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. I think it's one of the, one of, as you know, you know, as I was joking about the fact that a lot of the glossy magazines have, uh, you know, ads for SUVs and Rolexes, okay, which perhaps doesn't bode well necessarily for the coverage inside because a lot of it may be slanted towards more of a luxury traveler, which means that it's perhaps less accessible to the kind of a, a, a mass audience. Um, that said, especially in the last two years, that's been changing dramatically. So now virtually every single cover of a travel magazine will have something to do with a budget. Okay, something about how you can do a trip for cheap or for less. It's become part of the travel rhetoric in the last two years. You can't, the world's rhetoric, but I mean, in travel specifically, it's something that has become an angle almost always. And I'll bring up later about good pitches, and if you can pitch something from the budget angle, I mean, it just catapults your chances for success in terms of finding a place for the piece, okay? So that's a far magazine. Um, budget Travel, absolutely fantastic. Arthur Frommer's Budget Travel, um, owned by the Washington Post Company, actually. But substantive travel coverage, fairly independent travel coverage, and obviously with a budget angle, okay? Um, then you have the Condé Nast Traveler, both UK version with two L's, and 1L for the US version. Both of them will take lots of freelance uh, coverage. 
Most of the magazines have 50 to 75 percent are freelance written. Okay, very critical statistic. Um, and then you have islands. Yes, your favorite. Um, National Geographic Traveler, under the National Geographic umbrella, you have about 11 titles, okay? So you have National Geographic, the traditional yellow bordered National Geographic. But you also have National Geographic Adventure, National Geographic Traveler, you have a National Geographic for Children. It's a very robust travel magazine market is the National Geographic, okay? Um, then you have, of course, Travel and Leisure, head to head with Condé Nast Traveler. Um, then you have what I call the niche. He was bringing up islands, but you have out traveler focusing on the gay traveler, a very lucrative market. Um, lots of success in catering to sort of gay travel. So you have out traveler. You have a few of the Can Canadian travel magazines also very open to taking pictures from US travel writers. Um, and then you have the in flight magazines. Okay. Now the thing about the in-flight magazines, and we're going to talk about pay, the beauty of in-flight magazines is that they're, well, it's a captive audience. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> right? I mean, you're like, I guess the seat back in front of me, I'll, you know. <laughs> and they're like, take it with you, please, right? And you're like, no. <laughs> but so, you know, for the mere fact that it's a captive audience, it means that they produced abysmal coverage for a long time. I mean, the average in-flight magazine was just not very good. Then things changed. And in the last five years, almost every in-flight travel magazine will have some star on the cover. That's their big thing now, right? They'll have a star on the cover, I mean, you know, an actor, an actress, filmmaker, and then it'll be a little bit about their, you know, what kind of, what are their favorite things, wherever. The great thing about the in-flight magazines is they have a fairly big budget because ultimately they're seen as the marketing arm of an airline, okay? So they have actually a very robust budget. Um, and increasingly having a byline in an in-flight magazine, whereas once it was embarrassing, it's now coveted, okay? You also get the pay is commensurate with the other big glossy magazines. So generally, on average, a glossy magazine will pay a dollar a word, okay? So a thousand word article means $1,000. Uh, the That's going down to the 85 cents, 75 cents. It's sort of hovering around there. But the great thing is the in-flight magazines are commensurate with that. So pay on average what the, more, the bigger, more commercial magazines do. And I always urge my travel classes to investigate the in-flight magazines. The number one rule is they cover only things that are on their route, okay? The hub city being um, obviously usually covered hugely. So it means often you're covering cities like Detroit that perhaps don't often get coverage in the regular travel press. But as long as it's on the route of the airline, they cover it and they're open to pitches about that. Okay, and as I said, it used to be that a byline in an in-flight magazine was embarrassing. Now it's coveted Bill Bryson, Paul Theroux. I mean, huge names are beginning to contribute to flight magazines. So it's really a huge part of the travel market that I would say in the last three years has become a, a, you know, a big draw for travel writers. Okay, captive audience or not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And then you also have what I call the other travel coverage in just your average magazine. Um, I happen to be a big uh, New Yorker fan. <laughs> I just think this is a great cover because it's the TSA. It's a man enjoying his pat down, let's put it that way, by an attractive. <laughs> and you know with the New Yorker, when the New Yorker does a cover on it, because they're very usually like, they only do these very 
not that timely, you know. And so the fact that they did this shows how big they think potentially this uh, TSA uh, topic is. But I bring this one up because it's very apropos of the fact that you have a huge sector of what you would call general interest magazines, The New Yorker, Time Magazine, etc., that cover travel. And I feel like often from the travel perspective, many travelers, travel writers rather, will overlook this fairly massive sector. I mean, if you read The New Yorker, on average, I would say at least twice a month, because New Yorker's weekly, at least twice a month, you will have uh, some kind of travel coverage, whether it's talk of the town um, or, you know, a longer feature piece on the, uh, the Mongolian, you know, um, horseman. Whatever it is, you will find that a lot. Vanity Fair, New York Magazine, Time Out. Um, these are all Newsweek. These are all general interest magazines that will often do up to 20 to 25% of their coverage in a month on some aspect of travel. Okay, So that's why I always say it's very important to kind of look at it um, as those general interest magazines as also potential homes for your travel piece. Okay, We're going to do the magazine, I mean the newspapers in a moment, but I'm going to do my five point plan of what you should really, what should be the basic five steps that you follow when you're looking A, to write your piece for a magazine slash newspaper, and B, to begin thinking about how it's sellable. What is the value add? Um, number one, and this is critical, is familiarizing yourself with the tone, the style, the format, and the type of article that they do. And by that I mean, Perhaps the number one thing that editors will do when they receive your work for a, a magazine or a newspaper is the editing is often done, familiarize yourself with the magazine or newspaper. Um, I mean the voice, the tone, the style. Light and humorous, more investigative and probing. More from a consumer perspective, budget travel is very much, you should be able to take a budget travel article, put it in your bag, and literally use it for the trip. Okay? Familiarize yourself with magazines, newspapers. Um, by that I mean you go to, uh, what's that one, McNally Robinson? That, there's a bookstore on Prince Street. It's a wonderful bookstore. I think it's McNally Robinson. Um, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a great bookstore. You go, and they have a fantastic travel section there in their magazines. I mean, they literally have everything, including the new Lonely Planet magazine. Lonely Planet just came out with a new magazine, by the way. Where is this place? Oh, it's called, I'm sorry, I always get about, is it McNally Jackson or Robinson? McNally. I think it's McNally Jackson. <laughs> I can't remember. Print Street near um, Print near uh, and yes, exactly. Thank you. Is it Robinson or Jackson? I'm trying to make, it's not Jackson. Because then it's McNally Robinson. Okay, I think. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful bookstore. Not a Barnes and Noble. Not a Borders. A wonderful, large, uh, you know, very user friendly. And I always urge people to go and just spend a little cafe, just spend an afternoon among the magazines. You can literally take them to your cafe seat. So you don't have to buy, you know, spend eight ninety nine on every glossy travel magazine because they're so pricey now. They're like a book. And you flip through it and you literally begin to take basic notes on more or less how you can group the different magazines.